I got my tonsils removed at 26 and this was my experience. Growing up, I always took really small nipples with my bites and ate very slowly. I would sit there for sometimes 30 minutes, an hour with one bowl of food and I would always get in trouble and I d also developed a bad relationship with food growing up because I was always being disciplined, being yelled at or having my food tossed out and being blamed and guilt tripped for wasting food when someone else threw it out because I was eating slowly because my throat would swell when I eat. And it wasn't the whole throat area, it was mainly, I think, my tonsil area. I also experienced occasional bleeding from my tonsils, especially when trying to examine them or clean them, or sometimes I had blisters in that area and the blisters would also bleed. I decided to get them removed and it was an elective surgery. I did pay out of pocket around $3,000 to get my tonsils removed in Canada with also like covered care with the hospitals and such. My family doctor told me that because I wasn't suffering any airway issues or trouble breathing, specifically with my tonsils, and I also didn't have recurring tonsil infections like strep throat, that it had to be an elective surgery, and I was completely gung-ho with it because my main problem now, I still have swelling with my eating with the occasional bleeding, but my tonsillitis gets worse every year. And it's basically a condition where the canals in your tonsils are very deep. Here are some pictures of cross sections of what tonsils look like. And sometimes food can get stuck in there. Your plaque can get stuck in there. Like calcium builds up in there and it rots in there and it causes problems, uncomfortable, like sensations and lumps in the back of your throat. When I was young, around grade five, I had my first experience with my tonsillitis and these little small things called tonsil stones come out of your mouth because they are being ejected from the tonsil area. And at first I thought it was a piece of food, but it was rotten and absolutely horrendous. That's my dad. <laughs> And hands down, this is one of the best decisions that I made personally, my adulting. <laughs> I had complications after my surgery, which I will get into a little later in the video, but I want to answer some questions and I did answer some of this frequently asked questions in an Instagram post, but I want to come on here and talk to you in detail about uh, why I did this. I definitely wish that I had this done when I was a kid, but obviously from how my childhood looked, that wouldn't have been possible. And so I'm really grateful that I could do it now. And I do know that the earlier you do it, the shorter the recovery, the easier the recovery, and the less painful. The older you do it, recovery just keeps getting worse. So if you have children or if you yourself have issues with your tonsils, definitely get it looked at and see your options earlier than later. One of my main questions that I got on Instagram was about pain. Does it hurt? Does, are, will you suffer? <laughs> and my answer is kind of yes and no. Uh, my doctor said that, you know, this would be the only solution to all of the problems that I have. However, it is a very painful and long recovery process. And I was like, oh, well, how long is the recovery? And he said two weeks and I was like, each C-section of mine was six months recovery. I was like, that's nothing. <laughs> Give it to me, D slice me open, burn me up. <laughs> so it didn't really feel that bad for me. However, if this is like your first surgical procedure or you haven't had any physical trauma to your body, then um, it might be something that definitely stretches your pain tolerance. <laughs> So during the surgery, he actually cut out the tonsils with some kind of burning knife and that allows both the tonsil to be removed and the area and surface area to be sutured and burnt so that there's no bleeding from that area. And it was a whopping 11 minutes long, the shortest procedure of my life. <laughs> but in the operating room, you know, there's like five to 10 nurses, anesthesiologists, the doctors, and assistants all there, you know, helping getting it done. So I felt very good. I felt really in good hands and 
I was very, very glad that I could get it done so quickly. My throat only really hurt for two days after the procedure and I had a bit of trouble talking, but I could pretty much talk. Um, the only thing was swallowing water, swallowing spit and anything, it just hurt. So I did experience some complications with dehydration. On the third day, I actually went to the ER because I was feeling nauseous. I was blacking out a bit and I felt like fainting and throwing up at the same time. So 15 minutes later, I went to the ER and they gave me a whole list of foods or desserts basically that I can eat, as you can see. I was discharged after being given an IV bag. I only needed like half of it and then I was feeling like completely better. So I went home, I bought a whole bunch of stuff. The doctor said like, you know, if you eat these for a week and then after a week you can eat more heartier foods, heavier foods like soups, noodles, other carbohydrates. But unfortunately I had a couple more complications and I think this is just unique to my situation, but it is something that I think is good for people to be aware of because when I was sharing about this on Instagram, so many of you were telling me that you experienced similar complications with bleeding after your tonsillectomies as well. But after you're not supposed to yell, you're not supposed to cry, but I did both. And so I strained my throat and it was actually swelling quite a bit. My throat where it was burnt, it looked black and white. And then uh, the day after I cried and I was yelling because I was just really stressed from the pain and from still having to show up with my daily responsibilities. And there was some issue with um, my parents picking up the kids and it was just so trivial, but it just like tipped me over the edge. So I had a lot of more swelling and redness right at the edge of my scabs. It hurt so much. So I actually went to the emergency room again and the doctor told me like sometimes with tonsillectomies, like there could be days that we suddenly get worse when we were getting better and that's just like the unpredictableness of this kind of procedure. They just told me to stay home and rest, but Michael was like, hey, just leave. Just go to my parents' house and you don't have to be there for the kids. You don't have to talk to your parents. You don't have to do anything. You just focus on sleeping, resting, and getting any work that you need done at your own pace. So I was like, that's a good idea. Let me take you up on that. <laughs> However, the second day I was at my in-laws, um, my mom called and we had like bouncing triggers off of each other from both our traumas when I brought up my abusive biological mans and she was like triggered from that and then I became triggered from like her hushing me and when I was talking about it in like a good light like it's really good that we got out because I found out that he has narcissistic personality disorder and he's a narcissistic sociopath. So maybe that wasn't the time and place for me and I should have been more sensitive to her, but I was really triggered as well because she was very dismissive and like it's her trauma. So she's obviously reacting in like a fight or flight and she was choosing to fly. My father-in-law's like patting me on the back. <laughs> And my mother-in-law is like, oh, like, don't worry. Like, let's understand how she feels. And then my father, I'm like, oh, she doesn't care about me at all. Blah, blah, blah. Like all my whole life, she never listened to anything that I said. My father-in-law was like, don't cry. It's okay. If you cry, it'll get worse. And it got worse. <laughs> that night I woke up in the middle of the night. I kept swallowing mucus, but it wouldn't go away. So um, I decided to go to the washroom. I looked in the mirror and my throat was just bloody. I had a scab that came loose and it was dangling in the back of my throat. My throat ruptured and I had a hemorrhage in the back of my right side. It kept bleeding, so I was spitting it out, I was looking on the internet and it said occasional chunks of blood or chunks of scabbing while you're healing around, like the one week mark which I was at is normal. However, if you have bright red blood, please go to your nearest hospital. I was like, okay. 911. <laughs> and I was like shaking because I didn't want to interrupt or cause any problems for my in laws and their work. And it would have just been a lot for them if I asked them to drive me at like 5 a.m. in the morning. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'll just incur the cost and get it done and over with. The ambulance came in like five minutes and they gave me a bag to spit out the blood. Uh, they said it's not really good to keep swallowing the blood because you could end up like upsetting your stomach from all the blood and end up throwing up more. So I was given an IV with a medication that 
clots your blood and that actually created a new scab in the back of my throat and they said that it looks good but they're gonna send me to a bigger hospital to get looked at by a specialist ear nose and throat doctor so that uh, she can give me a better assessment i called michael and i told him like what happened and where i was and then i went back to sleep i was in and out of sleep and I was transported with another ambulance to another bigger hospital, a city down. And Michael came to meet me there and he stayed with me like the whole day. He came right after dropping off the kids to school and he was helping me with everything if I needed anything. And we saw the specialist. The specialist said like it looks really good and that it's Rescapped well, I won't have to do another surgery because if I undergo another surgery and they burn that spot again, then my two weeks of healing time is going to be reset. I was discharged and I went back to my in-laws. I stayed a few more days. Michael went immediately back home to pick up the kids again. So he spent like a whole school day. So I got back to my in-laws, I took another nap and they have been so good to me as well. My mother-in-law made me like pine nut, turmeric porridge, mixed rice and bean soup and chickpea soup. And then she also made me some other porridges with, I forgot what it was called, al algone? I don't know, I'll insert a picture, but it's like basically a really expensive, I didn't know it was that expensive. It's a seafood that's popular in Korea for having a lot of nutrients and they often give it to patients. So she made me that and it's like, I don't know, like $20 or $50 per can, depending where you buy it. And I didn't even know, like, I was just like, mm, yummy seafood. <laughs> so after a few days, I decided to go see another nurse to help me with my jaw because for the entire week after my surgery, even when I was swallowing my saliva, I would be clenching my jaw so tight. And now at that point, after my third ER visit, I was so in pain from my jaw. I do clench my teeth at night a lot due to my depression and anxiety to the point where even my dentist recommended me to get a night guard because he saw already cracking and chipping in my teeth. She also like rescheduled me during the whole ER fiasco. So that was super helpful. I'm really thankful to nurse Emily at Face First Aurelia. And she helped me with a neurotoxin muscle relaxant in the jaw. The one that she used is similar Similar to Botox but it's like a different brand of it and it helps to basically make your muscle not react to your nerves and you don't use it as intensely she said that my muscle was actually very 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 big from all of that clenching because not only was I clenching at night my whole life but after the surgery i was clenching dozens of times and it was so sore from my neck all the way up to my ear to my chin, I felt immediately better when I got home because I wasn't clenching so hard. She did say that it does wear off, so she actually gave me a huge discount because she has a heart for her passion project, especially if there's some medical issues and issues with pain. So she just told me, you know, if I'm experiencing any more pain and like the pain is coming back, then I can just come in and see her anytime. And while I was there, she actually recommended me to one of her friends who's also in the same field. And I had a consultation for my face because I was starting to notice uh, several days later that my muscle was so much better that it was actually slimming my face quite a bit. And I felt like even after losing 20 pounds from my pregnancy weight, um, the fat on my cheeks haven't disappeared. And when I smile, it makes my face look like a chipmunk. And I always have to like worry about how I'm filming or taking photos so that it's not overly distracting. I really love my face the way that it is, but just this like one little thing always pops out in cameras to the point where other photographers and editors actually edit it out. <laughs> In the photographs, I'm like, huh, I see. Like, they see it too. <laughs> so Nurse Diane was super amazing as well, and she helped me with a dioxycholic acid that helps to melt your fat. So you can see a little bit of the swelling there from my appointment today. I'll put all of the links to their pages if you want to check out more information down below. 
I did pay everything privately and out of pocket because this is something that I wanted to do for my wellness and my health and it's been helping me so much. I'm just super grateful that I met the right people at such a fast and speedy time and that everything just like really aligned to help make it all go smoothly. Leave your questions below and I'll get back to as many as I can. In the meantime, you can watch this video that YouTube recommends you next and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Love you. <laughs>